Well, in rheumatology, as you know, and the industry analysts will easily see that we're a very small group of highly specialized people. We're, we're fragmented. There's no Cokes or Pepsis. We're onesies, twosies, fusies throughout the industry. Um, the threat of new entrants is uh, not great because there's a huge barriers to entry. We have three sectors we have to satisfy. We have to satisfy the end user, the patient, okay? But then we also have to satisfy the referring physician in many cases, okay? And if we're going to go that far, then we have to satisfy the entity, the insurance company, the managed care company. We have to satisfy them by accepting their fee schedule in one way or another. So uh, we have lots of imbalance and power between the buyers and us, the industry participants. Uh, in 2003, <coughs> the ACR published a benchmarking survey in which they tried to analytically look at the characteristics of uh, private practices who are doing economically better. And they found four key characteristics. <clears throat> One was a direct correlation with the uh, n number and quantity of, of, in of um, activities that were insourced in terms of ancillary services. Secondly was proper coding. It turned out that no rheumatologists were notoriously poor at under coding for their services constantly coding at level three when it should have been four or five and those practices that were documenting and coding appropriately were obviously doing better uh, those practices that had minimal delays in seeing patients were rewarded for that it's not just getting new patients in with less delay it's getting people back your formers back and seeing them in a timely fashion as well as the wait times that they sit in your waiting room if you can you know, manage those uh, better, you're gonna do economically better. And again, the use of physician extenders. And this triangle is basically you are the company, the patient is your customer, and then you have to rethink your staff member as your internal customer. So the external environment, if you talk to rheumatologists, they'll typically tell you that this consists in our industry of four main sectors. One is that, you know, who we're contracting with, who are the payers? and your evaluation and management contracts and the contracts that you do for your ancillary services. And although you know, they come out with fixed fee schedules, there's, there's room for negotiation. Next is the functional relationships with your so-called exchange network. All the people that are outside your entity that you know, will have an impact on your bottom line. And it's obviously your suppliers, other consultants, and of course the legal entities and regulatory agents that you have to deal with. And thirdly is just this kind of activity through ACR, CSRO, NORM, where you cooperate uh, through your professional organizations. The last aspect is what is referred to in management as vertical and horizontal integration. And these are uh, two ideas that really bridge between the external environment and your internal environment. And if you look in the center, the rheumatologist core competency obviously is evaluation and management of patients, but we utilize a whole slew of services uh, to execute. And the more, and vertical integration regards insourcing rather than outsourcing those actions, those activities that are close to your core competency. Energy is changing, uh, and it's changing fast. Um, look at how you get your entertainment, your news, your books, your music, uh, finance, the whole continent of Africa is way ahead of us in terms of, you know, implementing a banking solution for this huge uh, population of people that don't have access to banking, uh, manufacturing, shipping, geopolitical movements, you can talk about multi-level governance, what social media has, has done to uh, geopolitics. Uh, so why should healthcare be any different? I mean, we're going to con have continued change, you know, more outpatient management, more population management, bundling, directs or, or concierge modeling, risk shifting back to the patient, back to the consumer, uh, and big data implementation uh, for our services. So it is going to be dynamic. I think the pace is going to pick up uh, over the next five years. Uh, it is going to be disruptive towards you know, our old way of thinking in a pure fee-for-service uh, environment, uh, like I said, gradually, but it's picking up, and it, it will require you not only to learn the craft that you're working so hard at right now, but to learn to be a team leader. You're ultimately going to be guiding a group of people to effectively manage populations of people, so uh, think about that.
but I'm very encouraged because you're the generation that can handle this. You grew up in the technology age of rheumatology.